Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. Today I'm making an old fashioned candy and it's sponge candy. Have you ever had sponge candy? Tell us below. And if not, get in the kitchen today, follow along, and make this recipe because you'll have it ready in five minutes. All right? I'm going to show you how cool it is. This is the candy and you're going to cook it until it strings like this. And then you're going to enjoy it when it cools down. All right. First thing we're going to do is pour up our Cairo syrup. Now, this is dark Cairo syrup, and the dark will give it a better flavor. And you're going to have one cup of syrup. So I'm going to turn it around so y'all can see how much I'm putting in there. So here goes our syrup, one cup. And then you add a cup of sugar and get fine granulated sugar if you can. So we're gonna put this in there and then I'm gonna stir it. Now, once this starts to boil, we're going to boil it three minutes, and we'll, we're going to check on it, so it may take it longer than three minutes. So what you're going to do is um, boil it until all the sugar dissolves, and it's got to get to a string stage, which is a hard crack. Now, a lot of the recipes say use a thermometer and cook it until it's 300 degrees. But as you can see, my nonstick pan is pretty big. There's not, it's not deep enough for me to measure with a thermometer, unless you were making a lot of candy. So if you wanna double the batch, you might could get a thermometer in it and use a smaller pot. Uh, but I'm just doing it this way because I can throw it in some water and see when it strings. So bring it to a boil first. Get it mixed up good and get all the sugar off the sides that you can. And then we're just going to discard this. You're not going to put this back in there because it's got sugar granules on it. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a lid on it. And we're going to wait till it starts boiling all the way across. And when it does that, we're going to turn the timer on three minutes. When that timer goes off, I'm going to check it and see if it's hard crack. Most of them will say three minutes. But we're just going to check it and see, all right? Now, it matters how thick your candy is. In this pot, it's really thin. So it may cook quicker than it would if it were deep in a smaller pot. Um, that's why you can't give anybody a time when it comes to candy. You typically use a thermometer. Um, but now we're waiting on this to come to a boil, and you can see... I'm going to open it just so y'all can see it. But you can tell the middle is not good and hot yet. We'll use this to see if the candy is ready after the three minutes. And the way you tell is if you drop it in there and it separates or looks like a little softball, then it's got to cook until when you drop it in there, it streams like a piece of sucker candy. It's got to be hard. Now it's boiling good. I'm gonna put it on two minutes because I talked for a good minute. Don't you think I did, Chris? At least. All right, this recipe and all the recipes I've seen do not call for salt, but everything's better sweet with a little salt. So we are gonna add a dash of salt to our candy. So I got the salt out. And after it comes to the crack stage, we're going to take it off the stove. We're going to add a tablespoon of baking soda and a tablespoon of vinegar. 
And I happen to have apple cider vinegar handy, so that's what we're using. You can use white vinegar if you want to. Now, this candy's texture comes from the vinegar and the baking soda. They're going to react and foam it up. So, don't leave those two out. I saw a lot of recipes that had one or the other, but if you, if you do it right, you got to have both. All right? And we're going to throw a dash of salt in there to make it even better. It says do not stir it. Looks pretty, don't it? Now, when you do this, get you a new spatula. Do not use the old one with the sugar granules on it. Anytime you make candy, no matter what kind of candy you're making, you change out your spoons and your spatulas because you don't want to get sugar granules in your candy. A lot of people worry about water, but water doesn't really hurt it like they thought, you know, but sugar does. All right, it's been two minutes, so we're gonna check it because I think it's been three minutes, all right? And all you're gonna do is have your water handy and drop it in there. See how the candy did on the spoon? Let me reach down in there. It's not quite hard enough yet. It's still, when you pick it up, you can see it stringing, but it's still a soft string. See, I could bunch it up and, and ball it back up, so it's not quite ready. Now let's try. Another thing you can do is just try it on your... See how it's stringing? You see how that's forming a string? That's perfect. Let's turn it off. And I, I boiled it a couple of minutes longer and it ain't gonna hurt it because it's hard candy. This is hard candy, okay, like a sucker. But this is gonna change it a little bit. We're gonna put in a tablespoon of vinegar. A tablespoon of baking soda. And a dash of salt. And stir it up. See how that reacts? This is called sponge candy. Boy, ain't it pretty. Look at it. It really foams up a lot more than peanut brittle. Peanut brittle has butter in it, but peanut brittle doesn't have the vinegar in it. All right, and so we're gonna go ahead and get this poured up. And this is the size pan it says to put it in. So if you do the one cup, one cup recipe, nine by nine. Some people do two batches at one time. But y'all look at this. This is a nonstick pot and it's still wanting to kind of stick in there. So what a mess it would be if you used a regular pot. It would just take forever to get all this candy out of it. I have never had sponge candy. I had a request for it today. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to go in there and make that. It won't take me five minutes to make that candy. We're going to break it apart once it cools down and into pieces. Look how it's stringing on the... Watch this, y'all. I want y'all to see what stringing means. A lot of people, I tell them, I say, cook it till it strings. And they're probably like, well, what is she talking about? This is what I'm talking about. Watch this. Let me do it on this side so y'all can see. Yeah, you got to kind of get them. Coral. See how that's turning into a string? Like a hair almost. So it's hot, but look, I can pick it up. A lot of people decorate uh, stuff with candy strings. Uh, they just make a clear candy and they would use the clear K-Row instead of the dark. I'm curious to see what it tastes like. 
Okay, I buttered the dish, but I'm gonna go around it with my knife to loosen this up. So you're just gonna go around it. And it's gonna have to be pretty thin, whatever you use. So like a regular case knife, butter knife thing, it's probably not gonna work. And y'all, I buttered this thing. I think it's gonna need some coaxing. You may just supposed to beat it up in the pan, but here it comes. Aha! I didn't want to beat it inside the pan because I don't want to mess up my... Look at it. It looks like a sponge. For real. I think I did it perfectly. It looks perfect. Awesome. It looks just like a sponge. Okay. Um, she got a piece and she's chewing it. Yeah. Chris, get a picture for chewing it. You it's better. funny. Soda. <laughs> you better hang on to your... She's still Chewing it. Yeah, you better hang on to your teeth with this one, your caps and your teeth. Okay, I will say for real, um, this is going to be cheerier than peanut brittle. Even if it had, it has more soda in it, so you would think it wouldn't be, but it's going to be chewy. So if you have fillings and caps and stuff, you might want to um, put it in your mouth and just enjoy the taste and like a supper almost. But now it's. It's uh, spunky in the middle. I'm gonna put, take a piece, put it in my mouth. Mm hmm. No sticks to them. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and I know I cooked it long enough. It's, it sticks to your teeth immediately. It's delicious, so, though, ain't it? Yeah, it's like. Uh, it tastes kind of like a bit of honey. The inside of a bit of honey. If you need to do any talking, you don't need to. So, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Right now, this is a very cool candy. It looks very cool. But, it's like a sponge. There's no reason for you to put it in your mouth and chew it, chew it, chew it. Just put it in there and enjoy it. Okay? That's our tip to you today. Uh... As people who had never had it before. My mother didn't make this. Did you ever have it, Chris? No, I never even heard of it. So, this is a new candy for me. But I think it looks just like a sponge. Mm -hmm. So, I think we were very successful, y'all, in making our sponge candy today. And I can tell you right now, I'm going to put some in here. I actually just, um, I'm just going to put... I'm seriously just going to put it in my mouth. That's what I did with the last one. It's already melted. Yeah, don't try to take a bite out of it. No. Eat it like you do a piece of peppermint. Don't chew on it. Just enjoy it. Mmm, it's so delicious. Mmm, it's so good. It tastes a lot like a bit of honey. And that's one of my very favorite candies. So, yummy. I hope you've enjoyed watching Sponge Candy. That's a lot of candy. Yes, it is. Yes. I mean, because you can only eat a little bitty, tiny bit of it at a time. That is a lot. Yes, it is. And I would cut it in little pieces so you're not tempted to bite into it, okay? But it's good. It's really good. And it was so simple to make. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. And thank you for the tip on... Uh, giving it a try because we really like it. Okay, we'll see you next time on Colorado Valley Cooks where we cook like our mamas did. Make you some sponge candy.